Daniel Shields, the principal officer of the U.S. consulate here in Japan, has given the order to fire them up. And they're cranked for the last time as we're coming to you live from Nagoya, the Suzuka course in Japan, the third largest city. Nearly five million folks in this area. Big automotive industrial portion of the country. And here is your starting grid today. The 85 Winston Cup champion, Rusty Wallace, is on the point with Ernie Irvin alongside. Row two will be Michael Waldrip, and with him, two-time Daytona champion, Sterling Marlin. Going back to row three, there you've got that truck driving fool, Mike Skinner, who's going to Winston Cup next year, and look out, he's going to be tough. Dale Jarrett's right there as well. In row four, It'll be Terry Labonte, the new Winston Cup champion, and Jeff Gordon, the 95 Winston Cup champion. In row five, the seven-time champ, Dale Earnhardt, and Ron Hornaday, the new Craftsman Truck champion of NASCAR. In row six, it's Butch Gillian, Winston West star, and Wally Dollenbach, twice Trans Am champion of the U.S. In row seven is David Green, the 95 Grand National Champion, and Nakaya of Japan. In row eight, Lance Hooper, the defending Winston West Champion, and Toshia, the Grand Touring Champion of Japan. In row 10, Bobby Hillen is there, and Fukuyama three times the Formula 5000 Champion of Japan. For row 10, you have Scott Gaylord and Joe Bean ready to compete today. In row 11, Robbie Gordon, twice a winner in IndyCar racing. And of course, from 85 to 90, just controlled everything in off-road racing. Rick Corelli's there as well from Denver, Colorado. In row 12, Larry Gunselman from the West Coast and Waukita. Row 13 is Johnny Benson, former Grand National Champion and the greatest champion NASCAR has produced over so many decades, Herschel McGriff. Is Dick Bergen was pointing out to you. There's the last row, Dan Obrist. Uh, he just goes back to the very beginning, that very first race at Darlington in 1950 when he finished ninth. But the real incredible part about Herschel McGriff is he won the Mexican road race in 1950. It was a 2,000-mile race, and he won by 72 seconds. Ah, we've got one car that's uh, having a little problem out here as we get him cranked up and try to get going. The number 03 is down. Joe Bean for a moment. West Coast competitor. Now again, the race format for today is two 50-lap segments, 15-minute intermission between them. The 70-mile goes. So um, fuel is not going to be an issue on this. Tires, well, this is the same tire they've run at Sears Point. And it's the same tire all the way around on all four corners. Top 10 reversed at the end of the first 50 laps. Ought to make it fun because you know that uh, Rusty Wallace is out here to crank this one up and go. And of course, if Earnhardt has anything to say about it, he'll win both segments just because he wants to. They're trying to push Joe Bean's car off. It has come to a stop just below turn eight. Turn eight is that final portion of the course before you swing back down into the main straightaway. Serpentine back straightaway, which you take mostly in second gear, right? All the way from turn one all the way to turn eight is in second gear, and you cut the corners, and the car actually leaves the ground on the inside of the racetrack going through the S. There you see them coming by Joe Bean's car as it climbed that hill. That's a pretty good climb, too, buddy. It is that. Uh, you can see that's uh, even steeper than the front straightaway, and going into turn eight, you go almost straight uphill. Getting ready for a start. We're going to have to push Joe Bean away, so we'll take a quick commercial break and then be back to give you the green and the race from Suzuka. Field coming by. I believe they have one more before they're going to turn them loose out here as they come down out of turn eight as we speak to you live from the Suzuki course in Japan for NASCAR racing. Let's go to pit road, Steve Burns. And Joe Bean has just pulled into his pit stall. Talk about a heartbreak. They have no oil pressure. They think they've lost the dry sump pelt. A heartbreak right now for Joe Bean. 7,000 miles, and it happens before it starts. That's Boy, a tough I tell one. you, when that happens, that's it. Uh, everything quits working in the motor, and then it gets absolutely no oil to it, and it'll burn it up in a moment. Take a look at the uh, in-cars, buddy. 
That's Terry Labonte, Kellogg's car for Rick Hendrick, starting seventh in this event. Gave us that great show at Atlanta to finish the season in Winston Cup racing. You see him zigzagging there. What they're doing is cleaning the tires off and getting some heat into them. They won't work until they get a little bit of heat. Pole sitter, right, stuck right up behind that pace car, Rusty Wallace, who really turned a lap. Remember, he was one of the two teams that came over here and did some testing earlier, and I guess it paid off for him. Earnhardt had trouble on his pit stop, or he might well have been up front. Take a look at the suspension. This is going to be fun to watch today. Hi, Snake. <laughs> little message back home from some of the crew on car two. Now, this is from Fukuyama's car, the number 23 car, Travis Carter machine. They're very high on this guy. They said he really understood the balance and the weights, brake bias on this machine, and uh, there he is himself. Mr. Fukuyama, ready to go, NASCAR stock car racing. Travis Carter's high on him, I tell you. He said he so knows Cecil the Gordon? chassis very well. Yeah, Cecil was up on him, too. As you see the field coming around, getting set for a start. Going up to turn eight, where uh, Alma Langley passed away the other day, and all of these cars are bearing the number 64 on their flanks in memory of Elmo as we get down for this start. Pace car is in. We're ready to go racing. You're watching it live from Japan here on TBS. Down comes the field. Wallace has it in tow with Ernie Urban alongside. Green is down. And here's Ernie Urban trying to make the jump. Wallace. Wallace is trying to do there is counter him going down in the corner. This is very important to be leading going into turn one to get set up for turn two. Track position is everything, everything That's on this Fukuyama course. That's off the race course Ooh. and out into the sand there. And right back on again. <laughs> Wild beginning. Number 12 in trouble. It slid off. Dan Obrist picks it back up and gets back on it another time. Wallace and Urban. In a frisky fight up in front for that lead. Coming through turn seven. And Obrist has pulled it off. And Obrist in a bit of a problem here in the early going. Coming around with Wallace in the lead. And look at him, double him up. You said you couldn't run two abreast on the backside. In third, Michael Waldrop is right there, but beating on the side of his car. Here comes Sterling Marlin looking for third, and Jeff Gordon coming with him. Well, anytime you have the inside, you see he has the preferred line, and Mike just had to give room there. As Jeff Gordon's got the inside, but going down into the next corner, I don't think that he'll be able to make the move, Jeff Gordon. And they're still side by side back there. Finally gets it. Here's Obrist in trouble. Wow. That's trouble. Nice little 360, and thank you very much, and on his way. Well, that's Look at this, still side by side. Gordon trying the outside. They said it couldn't be done. Whoa. He's got the inside coming in the corner. You see Jeff Gordon has picked up the position for Mike Waltrip as they start up through the S's. So Gordon has picked up a couple more spots. Great racing in the early moments of this one. And here comes Sterling Marlin, pounding down the inside, up into second spot. He goes looking for the leader, Wallace. Three wide going into turn one. That's Ron Hornaday in the 45, and of course Dale Jarrett in the 88. Michael Walter beginning to fade just a little bit. Yeah, he's using that. Now he gets it down. He got stuck on the outside. But look at those front four close in. Exciting racing. Take a look back here as to where Earnhardt is letting the field come through for you. Give you an idea of their position around this thing. Oberst on the back, bringing it in. Ooh, I saw some smoke there. You could see a car light up the rear tires. Uh, it's a very, very off-cambered corner, the eighth corner there. And if you go in there too hard, you'll light up the right front getting into the corner. I made a big plume of smoke getting down in there. Back in ninth position is Earnhardt as he has made some quick moves and tried to pull himself up with that front group. Lapping Obrist on that critical turn one from 170 miles per hour down to about what to make that first turn, buddy? Well, you drop all the way down into second gear, so you go down from 170 miles an hour, probably down in the low 80s. 
Here's the front four. Here you see as Gordon comes up through in the third spot. Back in fifth is the 21. That's quite a climb to the top of this thing. It's a tremendous climb, and then that drop of the main straightaway. Oh, boy, you're getting the brakes there. <laughs> he really got off in the up. sand just a little bit, getting into the corner. Three wide as he come down towards the front straightaway. Leave him. That's uh, Dale Jarrett trying for fifth spot on the 21. And he's got it. And they're going to stack and penalize him there. Meanwhile, Wallace further back. Makes his run. And you see Hornaday in that number 45. Ken, that's impressive when they come down the front straightaway. Three wide. There's only room for two cars in that corner. You can see they really got on the brakes and sorted that out before they got there. Mike Skinner hasn't got it sorted out with his two teammates. Bernhardt. Obrist comes into the pits. He's out of this race. Brings it to a halt. And we can get a quick word on that number 12. And Dan Obrist just into the pits. I talked to his crew chief, John Irish. He said when the 12 car got into the gravel, it got maybe in between the tire and the rim. They've got a very loose tire. That's also a disappointment. Their sponsor is a children's hospital. Everything they win today, they will donate to the hospital. So he wants to get back out. Jeff Gordon was running in third. He came wide out of eight, got it all the way up, did some serious agricultural racing and dropped back a spot. Meanwhile, look at Sterling Marlin closing on Rusty Wallace as you look back from Rusty's car. These live pictures coming to you from Japan of this battle for the lead. It's Wallace in first. Take a look back further in the field and you see a big fight going on. Michael Waltrip trying to hold off Skinner and Earnhardt. We have a full course caution at lap six. Michael Waltrip erupting an engine. Full course yellow, he's laid down some oil and there are the standings with Wallace, Marlin, Irvin, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett now in the top fifth followed by Hornaday. You see Michael Waltrip walking away. Take a look at what happened to Michael Waltrip out here in the Wood Brothers, number 21. Just past the start finishing line, you can see a big plume of smoke coming out of the back of the number 21 car of Michael Waltrip. That's a bad sign. That's either an oil line or he completely ruptured the engine. 75 thousand dollar bonus was the potential because he'd won the Winston Select back in May at Charlotte not to be from Michael Waltrip. Let's go to Dick Bergren. Well, all of Michael Waltrip's crew is just standing around watching television here in the garage. I'm with Eddie and Lenny Wood. And could you guys tell what happened to that thing? What made it blow up so demonstratively? Uh, I think we lost the transmission. I don't know. He said he got off the course, and I don't know whether he'd done something then or what. But well, when you lost the transmission, would that cost the engine, or is all that smoke just from the transmission, Len? I think that's from the transmission. We'll see when we get it back in here. but. Long way to come for a short time. You gonna fix it? Uh, we're gonna look at it and see what's wrong. Well, everybody's got transmissions here, Ken. They're gonna try to fix it, maybe. Len Woods, six laps, and the Wood Brothers and 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 Waltrip's hope of getting himself a shot at a bonus out here today goes away. Here is the 21 being pushed in. We'll take a commercial break and be with you once again with our coverage of the Suzuka Thunder Special 100. Take a look at the uh, top 10 here at the present time. Back to uh, Terry Labonte in 10th spot. Been some real shuffling out there. Jeff Gordon had a strong third and fell to fourth as he had trouble up here in turn number eight. The uh, NASCAR brought everything over except their usual scoring. I would think they might have wished they brought it because the scoring's been <laughs> a little bit behind here. But say, let's go to uh, Steve Burns. And while Michael Waltrip was having his problems, Johnny Benson made a pit stop. The uh, brakes were too cool, they said. They taped up some of the opening, and as you can imagine, the brakes are so critical on this road course. So they taped up some of the openings. Hey, let's go to Dick Bergren. And Michael has just arrived here in the garage area. What was it, engine, transmission, what happened? Transmission, uh, it wasn't the transmission's fault. I messed up, I missed, missed the gear a little bit, and uh, over the thing and tore it out. So uh, we came a long way to run four or five laps and have a transmission go away, but we're gonna put another one in it. Sitgo wants to be here and we want them to be here and nobody can see us if we're in the garage, so we'll go run some more anyway. Blew a, blew a chance at 75 grand and 6,000 miles. Uh, I feel like a real 
dummy. But. If he can use the money, too, he's going to take his wife off to Maui in a couple days so they can celebrate their third anniversary. I bet that'll cost a couple bucks. Yeah, it may be on a tramp steamer now. <laughs> that was a bad day for Front of the field, a guy on the move, 42, Robbie Gordon, 21st, up to 14th position. And Earnhardt, he's on the attack, too. Here's number three, Earnhardt just coming by. He's in eighth spot. Sterling Marlin's been having a time of it over here. He's up into second spot and ready to beat on the rear bumper of Rusty Wallace for sure as we get set for a, another go. Field getting organized. I think we're about another lap away before they turn them loose. Sterling Marlin in that second position, number four. A little difficult getting uh, used to the food he's been getting over here. A little tough, huh, Sterling? Not really. We had a hard time getting French fries yesterday at a restaurant, so uh, we noticed it was on the kids' platter, so ordered some kid platters just to get the French fries. You couldn't substitute, so... Uh, we're making that okay. <laughs> We've been having a good time. There's the 28. Ernie Irvin started outside of the front row. Flipped it up to 30. Take a look at number five. Labonte been having a good, solid day once again. I can add to one part of uh, Terry Labonte's drive right now. He is not using the pulsator that he used in uh, Atlanta to numb his hand. He said it shorted out in Atlanta and really started electrocuting him a little bit, and he had to jerk it out. So uh, he decided to just take a shot this morning and, and grin and bear it. That's Terry Labonte, who's traveled all his distance, still having trouble with that knuckle which he broke in that race at Phoenix and went out and still finished third. Kellogg's car. Let's go to Dick Berger. Well, Ken, if you're going to go six or 7,000 miles to race, you better have a couple of spares. But the amount of spare parts that some of these guys have brought are just absolutely mind-boggling. I'm in the 21 pit. You take a look down here. This is an entire front clip, hubs, brakes, chassis. The entire frame of the car is here. Right beside it, a complete engine, ready to bolt in, ready to go on the race car. Behind me, this is the rear end package. On the bottom is the rear end, oil cooler, all the vents and tubes and all the rest of it. By the way, this helps get the car through customs. One unit, two units, three units. Interesting technology <laughs> in the garage area for racing on the other side of the globe. Do you have any trouble getting through customs, Baker? Oh, I'm telling you right now. You know, I'm watching these guys, and everybody said, you know, some of them will probably lay back and try to finish somewhere like 10th so they can start in the second segment up front. I don't see any of these guys resting. They want to win both segments. They sure do. And that's been the story here from the very first lap when you saw that big move by Ernie Irvin. He pulled up on Rusty Wallace. Sterling Marlin came firing up through the field, made a couple of quick moves to get himself a little closer to the front, started in fourth. He's now in second. Jeff Gordon, he's been flying for a while forward, then it backed up on him. He had started in eighth, had come up to third. Now you're riding in the pace car with Wallace. You really got to shake those cars to get that rubber off those tires, don't you? You really buddy? do. When they're hot, been out running like you have been, and, and get the tire hot, it'll pick up all the excess rubber off the racetrack, and it'll get an inch deep on the uh, tire. So you have to move it back and forth like that to scrub the uh, excess uh, rubber off the tire. That's what you see them doing, and there you are approaching that turn number one, and that turn one. After you're running 170 miles per hour, that shortens up into a 30-foot cross. So if you go in there two abreast, you better be ready. It's a reality check, I'll tell you that. It'll tell you how aggressive you are. You go down in there on the outside of a pretty good race car driver, the uh, 10, for me, I would think, I, I, I would just soon back off just a little bit and try to get under them coming out of turn two. 12 laps, uh, almost 17 miles have thus far been completed. Here's uh, Fujiyama a bit further back in the field, right up behind. And you get an overview of the course here. Once again, to give you an idea of where they are racing on the east course here at Suzuka. Now that first turn again, 30 feet wide, and you're shifting these big cars down from 170 miles per hour to make that horseshoe. Ken, you would think that turn one would really be the dangerous uh, turn, but turn two is the one you have to watch out for. Once you get into one, you're pretty well there, but you start to accelerate again, and then turn two is really tight. You have to turn hard right to get towards the S's. Field getting ready, pace car coming in. 
And as we come down to take lap 13, they're back under green. Boy, Bob Rusty got first. a great start there. So does Butch Gillian in the 38. See that red car, second red car back? That's again, they're three wide coming down. That's Robbie one. Gordon on the inside, further on back there, making it four wide down toward turn one. You see Jeff Gordon and all of them kind of yeah. sorting out single file there, but Robbie Gordon was four deep coming down the front straightaway. Wallace stays up in front, Marlin in second, Gordon is falling back to third, and Wallace's rear view. Ernie Irvin trailing along right in there next as they swap some positions around, but not that many. Wallace has led from the very outset here at Suzuki. To the top of the course, now fly away all down this main straightaway. Gordon there in third, Ernie Urban maintaining fourth. Just behind him comes Dale Jarrett in fifth, followed by Ron Hornaday in the sixth position. Riding with Ernie Urban in fifth position into turn one. Gives it a go, pulls up a little, but not enough to close up on that man just in front of it. You can see him cutting across the ripple strips there on the inside of the course. Well, right there, the, the car actually leaves the ground on the inside tires when you start through the ripple strips. Earnhardt comes to seventh. Earnhardt up to seventh. Rusty Wallace still out in front. Boy, that's a good shot of Sterling Marlin. He's getting up close to personal there as they start up to the S's. And the 13th spot has come Robbie Gordon. There is a man on a mission back there in the Felix Savellis, number 42. I think Jeff Gordon's got a lot of race car in third spot right there. He looked to the inside just a second ago at Sterling Marlin as they started off turning and felt better of it and fell back in line. But I think he has a very fast car today. Earnhardt looking for some room to try to gather him up. Gordon took a sneak peek on the inside of Marlin out of turn two. Here he is, still trying to get him. Still after him. Ken, in this first segment, they'll be talking to the crew chief and telling them exactly what that car needs and what adjustments they need to make. Right now, it would be almost critical if you had to make the green flag stop. There's just no way around this thing without letting those rear ends loose. You're trying to keep them as straight as you can through the corners, but. Not here at Suzuka in Japan. Coming by, they're going to pick up 14 laps this time. Front three have about 10 car lengths over the fourth place car. Back in eighth to Skinner. Dahlenbach has come up to ninth and into tenth. Moves Butch Gillian. Gillian's having a great ride. Now Robbie Gordon comes up to 11th. Terry Labonte in 12th, and David Green's got a a nine to one compression ratio engine out here. So they have to bring along and he's doing darn well. Well, I think this racetrack is uh, the surface itself. Yeah, you don't get a great grip on it. Maybe detuning just a little bit. You get a great forward bite off the corner. So it's probably making up for the difference down the front straightaway through the S's where you can't use a lot of power anyhow. You can see they use 23 Fujiyama there. You can see he's pretty busy there. He's working that wheel pretty hard getting around this racetrack. But they are really impressed with the way this guy drove this car this week. Great bias is all to the front on these cars when you bring them onto a track like this. It better be. If those <laughs> rear wheels ever lock, you're gone. Remember, it's 50 laps in the first segment, and they're going to reverse the field. Hmm. You can see Robbie Gordon making another pass there. This Fujiyami right there, he's running very, very well. Yeah, closes up on Toshika in the number one as they're working the 17th lap. Whoa, Ooh. somebody got a piece of the inside there. Bobby, Bobby Hillen. Hillen, yep. That's Rick Corelli in the 61 there. When you see a puff of smoke like that, you always have to check just for a second, make sure it's not a motor problem on the car in front of you. Saw Rick Corelli in the 61, and there is the one with Toshia of Japan. Uh, he is the national touring champion, has a lot of experience more than anyone else on this Suzuka track. You see everybody holding a very, very tight line. As a matter of fact, the inside tires were under the white line as they come through turn eight there. You don't want anybody to sneak under you down, the, down through that corner. Bernhardt continuing to pace himself toward the front. 
And Terry Labonte doing what he does in any race on any track, be it Sears Point or Watkins Glen or Atlanta. Easing along up through the field in car number five for the Kellogg's folks. There he is, and right after him is Butch Gillian, that red and gold numbered 38. Interesting car there. Gillian, an interesting driver. You remember we saw him in a few truck races this year. There's a sign on the side of Butch Gillian's car in Japanese. And I asked him if that was a Japanese sponsor, and he said, no, what it said was, advertise here. <laughs> he's, driving, <laughs> he's driving one of the Bill Strop cars, as you know, Bill Strop passed away a year ago, but is certainly a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame. So here you are with Gordon trying to close in on Marlon and Wallace for the lead at Suzuka, where it's coming to you live. NASCAR outside the U.S. and another postcard. TBS from Japan, Suzuka, NASCAR in action. Exciting race with Rusty Wallace out in front, Sterling Marlin in second. But the story is Robbie Gordon from 21st. He's rolled the Felix Sabetta's car into 10th position, and he's closing. Meanwhile, up in front, good hammer and tong battle between Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin in that second position. Seeing them coming down the main straightaway. Some 170 miles per hour and then into that very tight first turn. 50 laps the distance. There they are around one and into this tricky turn two. How about that for some race? Ooh, getting a little loose there, buddy. I guarantee you that was sad move that you want to be. And oh, sideways and all the way around. Is that Butch Gillian? Spin, still trying to pick it up. Man. Side, it's a little dusty. They say it's Scott Gaylord that's done the big looper. Indeed, that's him. As he got it around, and David Green squeaks through on the outside. Some great driving on both sides. You see a car in the sand trap there trying to get by him on the inside and one on the outside. Everybody did a great job of getting through there without making it really bad. Corner caution only, not all around the track. They're still wide open here. Wallace, Marlon, Gordon. Ernie Urban, one, two, three, four, and then following them comes Dale Jarrett in fifth, and Earnhardt is up to six. The other guy that's on the move is Wally Dollenbach. Just behind Ron Hornaday in seventh is Mike Skinner and Dollenbach, and they're having a duel of their own. Top of the course one more time, and Sterling Marlin tenaciously holding on. Another replay on Gaylord in number 50. I think he may get a little, well, you see, the, he's on the outside. He gets just a little help there getting in the corner. Scott Gaylord out of Lakewood, Colorado, Denver suburb, gets himself a wild ride here in Japan. First time driving that BMM car. And that was a ride for him. Invited by Bill Strausser to take this one. We got another look at this one, too. Down on the inside, you saw Toshia of Japan just barely missing the bullet. 23 of 50 now complete towards halfway in the first 50 lap segment. That's Herschel McGriff sitting there right now with some kind of problem. This will probably bring out a full four show. Herschel McGriff, 68 years of age. He got off the other day in practice and bent both the front and the back of the Dana 04. And once again, there's a, a problem here, and he is down, but I don't see caution. Yes, yellow is just out. Second caution of the day is just being flown, and it's for the man from Bridal Veil, Oregon, Herschel McGriff. So it keeps Wallace, Marlin, Gordon up in front as we're under yellow. Let's go quickly down to Kenji on pit road. Okay, now, so Japanese, three Japanese drivers are right now 13th, 14th, 15th position. So the highest Japanese driver right now, Mr. Nakaya. So he's in uh, my name, my last name is Momoto. He also Momoto. So, so can I talk to something right now? So in. <laughs> 
Oh, it's it's very busy right now. So, sorry about that. So. <laughs> a little communications uh, gap right there. Here's Wallace up in front. Marlon right with him. That's been a good show. Sterling pulled up a couple of spots at the outset. He's not letting loose of of Rusty Wallace in these first laps. Look at Dale Jarrett coming by, followed by Earnhardt in six. Good run by Earnhardt. Steve Burns can give us some more details on pit road. Steve? And Ken, as we just saw, Herschel McGriff was a <laughs> Dex, what happened? Well, we lost the motor. We had an off-course excursion during the week and skinned the car up. I guess we probably over-revved the motor and didn't catch it. But it blew up today. What about left hand in there? So there's the story on the 04 as they push in the uh, car that is being handled by Herschel McGriff. Golly, what a story. 36 Winston West victories for that gentleman, and we mean gentlemen too. Talk about the history of American stock car racing for 50 years. He's been a good part of it. Back to Suzuka and the Thunder Special 100 right after these messages. This has been a lengthy stop, apparently an oil down out here on this 1.4 mile road course, the east course at Suzuka. And we're seeing a couple of pit stops. Bobby Hillen is coming in. Hey, this pays pretty well for the first segment, buddy. Yeah, you know, we were talking, it's $104,000 to win the whole deal, but the first segment, the first 50 laps, $35,000. That's worth going after. Yeah, and uh, been going after it, they have. You see the 37. That's Larry Gunselman from the west coast of the United States on pit road. What's going up? Let's go to Steve Burns. And Ken, as you know, a little while ago, Johnny Benson made a pit stop because his brakes were too cold. They changed the duct work to the brakes. He just came in again. They put on left side tires, figuring they had nothing to lose in the first segment. Bobby Hillen's also in right now, changing right side tires. Let's check in with Dick Bergeron. Well, Jeff Butcher is the crew chief for Scott Gaylord. Your car went round and round out there. What happened? Yeah, it did. It's got to do a nice job for us out there. Uh, past two cars going in, I think it was like a bunch of these NASCAR boys trying to squeeze in a sushi bar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's okay. Didn't hurt the car down. So we'll see if we can not hustle her back to the front. And I think the Strasser boys and the folks over here in Japan have been real nice. So having a lot of fun over here. Yeah, they came in. They put four fresh tires on it, Ken. It was quite a pit stop. There's a downgrade to the pits here, and they had a real tough time getting the right rear off. But they got four fresh ones on. Gaylord's back out, and he's going to try to keep it going straight. Scott Gaylord racing for a while. Of course, his dad did some pretty strong racing back in the 70s as a road racer. So uh, we'll follow that story as it unwinds here today. Road course, strange, different, unique look to the 1996 season as some of the very best from four different major series of NASCAR and make it five with that uh, Southwest Tour as well. All very well represented here in Japan. And then you've got Trans Am champions and IndyCar winners and uh, a couple of Japanese national champions in this field as well. We're at Suzuka, the course in Japan, and this is the first time that NASCAR has brought everything. I mean, their own, their own, all except for the scoring, brought their own officials. They even brought their own uh, records and uh, rollbacks from the Century folks. They were brought over on the boat, containered over here to Japan for this race and they will come back here one more time and then they're building a mile and a half super speedway uh, about 160 miles closer to Tokyo and they intend within a couple of years to show us super speedway racing and if the Japanese take to NASCAR Winston Cup stock car racing this form of racing like they did to baseball look out. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Well, usually if we we're going to ask questions about uh, Rusty Wallace, Robin Pemberton would be the guy we'd be talking to because Don Miller, the team manager, would be up on top of a grandstand somewhere spotting. But you're here. He's there. Don Miller, if you guys keep going this way, you win this first segment, you're going to start 10th in the second. That okay with you? Well, I don't know. You know, Robin and I discussed that along with Rusty, and we, uh, we're just going to kind of play our cards. Out. We're going to see how good the car really is, and now we're going to take a look at what's happening uh, you know about the 40th lap and then we'll make a decision and go for it what are you going to change in the pit stop what are we going to change in the pit stop four tires and that's it that's it okay that means he's running well ken squire <laughs> now there's a confidence level for you 
And if they were going to change something, they wouldn't tell us, I can tell you that. <laughs> Behind the pace car, Rusty Wallace giving you these pictures around this course. The pressure on the pit crews here in Japan is not exactly like it was in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> All right, 30 laps completed the first 50 here. We ought to tell everybody that each garage area has a TV camera in it with the standings and they can watch their driver going around the racetrack. That's what everybody's looking up at when yeah. we go into the garage area. There. Those monitors have been used all weekend long. Everybody's really appreciated that. and They've kept track of the practice and every time they've been in there, they are right there. It gives you an idea. And that's for every single car that's here. And that's why they weren't just in there dozing. They were carefully analyzing what their cars were doing on the track. Exactly. They could see the problem as the driver would come in and say, I'm loose up in turn six. They say, we know, we could see you. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, we're ready to go back under green. As they come by, they will have completed 30 and be working lap 31. See if anybody's going to try to make a move down this main straightaway. A little bit of a block there by Jared. Look at Jeff Gordon peel on the inside. That 30 foot wide first turn. We're still too wide to move further back. There's something funny you could see Dale Earnhardt and his uh, truck driver there, Ron Hornaday, as they got together getting in the middle corner there. Hornaday lost. <laughs> yeah, right. Ron Hornaday, defending truck champion. Such an impressive year for him. So Wallace stays in front. Everybody has to look up and look out for him in that lead. And Sterling Marlin sticks right there in second with Gordon in third. You can see Ernie Irvin's car getting a little bit tail happy as he started towards the front straightaway there. This racetrack is a great racetrack and aggressive drivers can attack it, but the grip is a little bit off. Earnhardt looking under Dale Garrett as they started down in the corner there. Dolan back up in there as well. And you see Robbie Gordon continuing to on the charge, trying to bring himself up. He's in 10th spot. Ron Hornaday is driving the number 45, and he's right behind Earnhardt in the number three. That's sixth and seventh position out there. Look how close Sterling Marlin gets now. This is the bumper cam. Look how close he gets right in the middle of the corner there. Really showed you what that bumper was for. Ah. Sterling Marlin taking a lower line out of that eight corner. And this is where you can really pass. And this is where you just use up the brakes after just one lap. Those brakes are cherry pink. They are hot on this track. And it was the big concern in the louvering they did to try to keep those brakes cool in this course. A lot of uh, homemade technology out here today. So Gordon lies third. Ernie Urban stays fourth. Dale Jarrett right there. Look at Terry Labonte in the number five pulling up on Robbie Gordon. Terry Labonte back there in fifth. And the Kaya leads the Japanese contingent. He's up to 12th position. There's the suspension cam going to work, Rusty. Well, yes, Rusty, suspension cam. You can see the spring really going down there. It's moving about three inches, as you can see, as he goes in the corner. It's really working that shock and spring up and down. Now, this is down the straightaway. You can see it's got about an inch and a half movement, but in the corners, that thing is really getting a work over. Gordon getting aggressive. He wants to try and find a move on Sterling Marley. Remember the move that Terry Lavani made to win that Grand National Race at Watkins Glen? The one corner up there where you're not supposed to be able to get a pass. And he scooted through and took the lead. I think we may see some of that here today. Let's go to Dick Berger. Another guy that'd like to make a move past one more car, at least, is Terry Labonte. Gary Dehart's his crew chief. Your car is running in 11th. Why is that one spot so important to you? Well, if we make it a 10th, Dick, we can go ahead and start you know, at the 50 lap mark. Uh, that's in 17 laps. We can start inverted start and we we'll start one. So we need to make up that one spot really bad. So that's like passing 10 cars if he gets by this one more, Ken. Race for the bubble back there. Thinking man race. That's what he's trying. He knows that they're going to invert. Now, these guys don't care about inverting. Uh -huh. They want to win the second. 
But back there, the struggle is for that 10th position right now. Robbie Gordon has it, and Terry Labonte is trying to take it away. See the 28 there, the fourth car in the line, that's Ernie Irvin. He is really attacking the S's. As, uh, I watched him just a little bit ago. He pulled down some eight car lengths and one straight away on these guys. Eighth position is Wally Dahlenbeck. That he's happy where he is for the moment. Out the back of Terry Labonte, looking back at that 11th place man. Robbie Gordon, oh, is that correct? Has he got around? Looks like he has. Hmm. Robbie Gordon has been passed by Terry Labonte, who is in the 10th, and there you have it. You see it right there. The 42 is looking up from outside the top 10 now. Terry Labonte's put the move on. So Terry Labonte going to 10th position. Going to drop Robbie Gordon one spot, and then the Kaya runs right behind them. Mike Skinner having a really good race at the present time in that number 31. And the international folks watching that number one car. That's the cheetah. And he is a tough racer. He's running in 12th at the present time. Oh, uh -huh. uh, yeah. here comes Gordon up on the outside, and he's going to take second spot. What a move on the outside down the front straightaway to get by Sterling Marlin and take over second spot. As you can see, the 28 car moved in there, and Sterling had to move to keep him from getting under him also. Now there's the quartet out in front in about a three-car gap. Yeah, that's that's to Dale that Jarrett. three car gap. That's Earnhardt, and he's on the move. He is really catching this front group. Indeed, it is. Earnhardt has picked up the spot. He's around Jarrett, and he's closing in on those leaders. You can see he's running a real wide uh, line through the corners. I think Earnhardt might be. Having just a little bit of chassis problems right now, but he's driving the wheels off at number three. As you can see, he's caught the front group now. We're getting our pictures from Japanese television, and they're hanging right with you. I, I would imagine they've done a lot of Formula One, and they're pretty used to the idea that they stay pretty much in formation, which is a whole lot different than what we see in stock car racing, American style. Here's the new challenger for Rusty Wallace. It's now Jeff Gordon taking the crack at Wallace for the lead. And laps 37 have now been completed. 50 laps, they'll invert the front 10. You can see how aggressive Jeff Gordon is. You can see him drive right up on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace as they come into turn eight. He's holding a little bit lower line, gets a little bit sideways coming out of the corner, which gives Rusty Wallace just a little better drive off the corner. But watch Gordon in the corner, how Jeff Gordon closes in on Rusty. He's trying to make the pass. He's there. Down into turn number one. It's Jeff Gordon scooting into the lead. Rusty Wallace falls back into that second spot, and Gordon moves away by three, four car lengths. It turns three and four. Take a look at how he did it. Okay, what happened there is the two car Rusty Wallace realized that the 24 car Jeff Gordon had really made up a lot of ground on him. When he pulled to the inside there, he just gave away. There was no point in really putting up a, a battle with Jeff Gordon. You can see he's pulling away as we speak. Certainly has the power to the ground out of number 24. Battle for second spot here as Sterling Marlin tries to close up. You and know, take I, that spot I here he comes. I really believe that Rusty Wallace is going to go back to that 10th spot so he can start on the front. You think so? You think he's line. letting him pass? They said they were going to make a choice uh, as to what they were going to do late in the uh, run here. So you can see him. He's dropping back and letting him go by. Back to fourth position is Wallace. That would put him out into the sixth spot on a restart. And here comes Earnhardt after him. 
Earnhardt will go for every position he can get in every I race. I guarantee you he won't pull over and go anywhere. But he'd go, if he pulls over, he's going to be going forward. Got very, very wide getting into turn eight. Well, he may be backing up on the other hand. Do you think that, the, that See, he he's running out? Go by on the inside. Now, we'll know he has a problem if he drops further than not, uh, tenth. But right now, he's just dropping back through the field. I think Rusty has made a decision or he's really having a problem of some kind. Dale Jarrett pulls up, take a shot at him. Moving the field around, you now have Gordon in front, Marlin in second, Ernie Irvin in third. Earnhardt has picked up a spot to fourth. And you got Wallace in fifth, and here comes Jarrett in sixth. Wally Dollenbach says seventh. Skinner is now eighth. Terry Labonte to ninth, and Gordon to tenth. See Jarrett looking to the outside. Look what a tremendous lead though Jeff Gordon has built over Sterling Marlin. Steve Burns has an update. Maybe you can tell us what's going on with that two car. Ken, we're here in Rusty Wallace's garage, and I walked over to team co-owner Don Miller. And I said, are you guys having a problem? He said, we're a little loose. <laughs> a, a nice wink, huh? <laughs> Trying to loosen up the pole for the second 50. All right, Kenji Mamoto, do you have a report for us? Yes, uh, I will be the Mr. Suzuki. He's a chief, uh, chief uh, crew chief of the Mr. Tsuchiya. So the, uh, actually, uh, he crashed the last Monday. So he's a superman. He <laughs> rebuilt the everything. So. Okay, so he just said uh, everything is fine. Mr. Chitsuya said on the phone, I'm enjoying. <laughs> okay, his dream is to go to NASCAR racing to Chia, and he really did have a crash back on Monday. He took the entire front clip off that car number one. He but did. But Chia is in 12th position, buddy. He did, and, and Robert Yates' team rebuilt that car for him. Uh, it's a Richard Petty look-alike, uh, the paint job and all. It even has the uh, stickers on it, just like Richard Petty's car. But I will tell you this. Robert Yates, had they not got in there and worked on the car, he wouldn't have been in the show today. There's the McClure, number four. And the McClure brothers came here to watch this car run. We'll stay right with you at the end of the segment. We're down to 42 laps complete, eight to go in the first segment. Then that 15 minute break, we'll talk to Rusty himself about what was going on out there. Well, you know, he got loose on the 40th lap. That was a strange thing. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, he's still holding right where he was, is he not? You see the 28 of Ernie Urban scooting through. You know, I'm seeing a little bit of smoke out of the four car of uh, Sterling Marlin. I hope that maybe it's uh, not anything terminal, but uh, the car is running great. But I do see a little bit of smoke every once in a while as he goes into turn one. That's brake smoke on the O2 there. Now you see Wallace. And we're looking further back in the field. Now there's the 42 of Robbie Gordon, who has that 10th position. That was Nakaya, and he was really on the brakes. You could see with our camera a while ago, he was smoking the, the brakes pretty bad, getting that turn one. Ooh, Fukuyama, number 23, has gone for a bit of a ride here. Gathers yeah, himself back up. Let's see if we can see what happened to him. Yes. Running in 14th position. He gets a look at the world from another angle. And back at him. Dick Bergren has another report on Pit Road. Well, Ken, you folks were talking a few moments ago about the O2. Nakia having a smoking problem. He should have a smoking problem. Nobody's had more engine trouble than he has. They are on their sixth engine since all of this started. Their problems began when they tried running regular pump gas, 87 octane pump gas in the car, and they blew an engine. They put another one in it, ran at 9,600 RPM, blew it, put a third one in in 48 laps, blew it, blew the next one in 46 laps. He's on his sixth 
engine. They hope, they think, maybe they've got all the lines clean enough so that thing's going to run all the way, but the smoke is not a good sign. Did he say 9,600? Something like that. Well, he'll use 15 if he keeps <laughs> doing that. These race engines are developed to run around 9,000. When you go over that, boy, they'll get in trouble. Look at Ron Hornaday in here, giving that rig a ride. Right up by Ernie Urban, and he's in the fourth position. Ron Hornaday. Uh, Ron Hornaday did a pit stop just a little while ago and come out with the leaders. He's a ways back now. Put him down one? Yeah. Down one, Hornaday. So with Hornaday down one, that would mean fourth spot is still Jarrett, followed by Earnhardt, then Wally Dolan back to six, Mike Skinner to seventh, and Rusty Wallace would fall into eighth. See Hornaday there with fresh tires all over Ernie Irvin, who was driving away from him not long ago. Those two tires really make a difference here. Hornaday ready to try and make a move right here. He'll try to from the line down deep here, but he's not going to get by the 28 car. Ernie Irvin is extremely fast down the front straightaway. There's a $35,000 bonus for winning the first segment. like Wallace has backed out of that 35,000. Ernie Irvin staying right there. And See, Hornaday is doing yeah. everything to get by him because he knows the front straightaway the 28 car runs so well, but on fresh tires, it looks like Hornaday is cornering quite a bit faster than uh, the 28 car of Ernie Irvin. He's in 21st position, Hornaday, with that pit stop. Right. The 21 coming back out. Remember, it ran the first four or five laps, yanked out a transmission, and they're back on the course another time. That's the number 30, and here's the 02. That's Nakaya of Japan in the 10th position, and that's the car that's been eating up engines all week. Nakaya, he's looking back at us. Look at that. <laughs> Tell you, there's a pretty good strike right there for Robbie Gordon. He needs to get by him. Make that position up. That becomes critical. Gordon has dropped back into the 11th spot by our count. And Nakaya in the 0-2 is in 10th. Here's the 21 back on the track. You see that's no, excess oil uh -oh. there. I'm not sure exactly what that's not going to work. It's Michael, still smoking. Michael Waltrip in the 21 having some real problems out here. I was kind of concerned when I watched all the oil coming out of the car down the front straightaway there that it might be just a little more than transmission. Nakaya in the 02, shown in 10th spot. Robbie Gordon just behind him in the 42 at fall. Here he comes. Nakaya slowing down in the main straightaway, and that's right where he popped an engine yesterday. It was right there that he had one erupt, and it looks like it's happened to him again. Nakaya, who is up in the top 10, slowing down and coming in. Ernie Irvin is spun. He's coming back out, buddy. Yeah, he's getting back up to speed, but you can see all the dust back here. That's where Ernie Irvin got around sideways. Down to the last two laps, and Nakaya in the 0-2. His rig has come to a halt. As of yet, no sign of a full course caution. Down to the end of the first segment with Jeff Gordon still leading. Sterling Marlin in second. Take a look here. Boy, I mean, Ernie Irvin's lucky right here. You can see him as Hornaday coming oh. at him, goes to the inside. He writes the car, no harm. Hornaday a lap down on the binders to miss a sliding Ernie Irvin. Leader coming up, Jeff Gordon. Last lap of the first segment being unwound right now for Jeff Gordon. Sterling Marlin staying second. Ernie Irvin was able to pick it back up. We'll see where he comes across. And we've got oh, Robbie Gordon is spun. That's too bad. He had himself up to 10th. So he'll have to come out of the back of the field on this one. And there's the flag, I believe, for halfway. Ernie Irvin is able to ride it and get back out there. 
And that's the end of that first segment with Gordon winning and Sterling Marlin in second. Looks to us like Ernie Urban was able to get back out there, buddy, and come across in third. Gail Jarrett had the lift for him. He finishes fourth, Earnhardt fifth, and Wally Dolan back right here in number 50, the 15 Hayes car. Comes up in the uh, sixth position. Whoa. Look at Robbie Gordon get into those soft tires there. That's quite a bit of damage to the rear of that car. You could see it just kind of buckle as he hit the inside wall. He better be glad those tires were there and that wasn't concrete. That's what Dick Bergen was talking about earlier, those soft walls and what a difference they would make. Well, the Hayes car for Bud Moore had a good ride. Kenny's See, doing that with the broken rib also. He was injured in Atlanta, and he's driving that car. All the turns are to the right, and he has a broken left side rib, so it's got to be painful. We'll come back to review the first segment. Give you the standings here shortly as they're bringing the field around and they'll come in for that 15 minute halt that will give us a chance to talk to some of these guys about their strategy out here 50 more go to go in this 140 mile race and we'll give you a whole rundown right now there's the top 10 that will be inverted which will put Johnny Benson and Terry Labonte up in row one and row two will be Rusty Wallace and Mike Skinner row three will be Dollenbach and Earnhardt row four will be Jarrett and Irvin and row five Sterling Marlin and Jeff Gordon on the restart now taking a look back 11 through 20 just outside that group Scott Gaylord came up with a good run buddy he did you know he had a problem and, and got uh, turned around right at the first part but ended up 11th uh, good run for him showing Robbie Gordon finishing in 16th spot after he slammed into the barrier just at the end trying to stay up there in that top 10 and take a look at the remainder of the field here Joel Bean had trouble very early. Transmission problem for Michael Waltrip. Obrist had some problems. Herschel McGriff was off the track. Took that car in with a blown engine. So there you see the lineup after the first 50 laps have been completed here in the Suzuka Thunder Special 100. Steve Burns. And Robin Pemberton and the crew working on Rusty Wallace's car. Rusty led most of the first part of this 50 lap first half. Rusty. Yeah, you started backing up there a little bit. How are you? I'm up there right now. It's just I started losing the front brakes, and when I started losing, I said, man, there's no use pushing it. I'm going to get in the pits and see what they can do with it. They worked on the right front corner trying to get, it looks like the brake ducts are clogged up with rubber, and so I think we'll be okay right now, but I wasn't going to run it. The brake pedal's starting to surge a little bit on. It was better just to let her breathe it and uh, try to get this thing to the end. All right. Well, maybe Don Miller wasn't winking after all. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Here's a switch for you. Look at all these media guys. They're not around the guy that just won the first leg. They're all around you. See ya. I am all alone here with Jeff Gordon. I'm the only journalist here. What a switch. You had a good, good run in the first half, Jeff. How about the second? Well, it's going to be a little bit tougher to come up through there. I think uh, some of those guys that couldn't work their way up there just, uh, you know, knew that we were going to be inverting this top ten and, uh, you know, decide that the second segment's the most important one. But, hey, we're here to put on a show, and if my car's capable of going to the front, then we're going to do that. And that's what we did the first segment. I want to say hi, hi to Ray and Rick and all those guys at home. They're missing out on all this fun, and we're going to try to win our first road course race here. Yeah, his regular crew chief, Ray Everham, is not here. Brian Weissel is his crew chief. This is the first time in Jeff Gordon's entire Winston Cup career he has not had Ray Everham on his side. All right, let's go to Steve Burns. And Sterling Marlin sitting in the car talking to his crew now. Sterling will be the first to yeah. admit he's not the world's greatest road course racer, but you were up front all day. Well, it, we'll just come over here, and uh, the guys worked real hard and, and come off truck real fast. And, uh, I like this course. It's pretty fun. So uh, we're having a good time. I tell you, the Japanese people have been great and a uh, great bunch of spectators, and uh, we love it over here. All right, Sterling, thanks a lot. That truck he came off was a cargo container that hauled that thing some several thousand miles here to Suzuka, just 300 miles southwest of Tokyo, Japan, where the stock car action is today. So the guy that's now on the poles with Dick Bergren. Johnny Benson finished 10th. That means he's going to start out first. He's put, ready to put the car in gear and fire it up. John, a lot of work to the front end of the car. What happened? Well, I guess Robbie Gordon wanted to uh, 
Uh, he's gone, Ken. He's going to go race, but they were beaten on the right front of that car. Robin Pemberton from Rusty Wallace's crew was down here, gave him some advice about how to take off on the start. It will be interesting to see how all that works. Steve Burns. With Larry McReynolds, the team manager for Ernie Irvin and Dale Jarrett. Larry, man, you guys were busy down here. What were you doing? Yeah, both of our cars has been really good since we unloaded here and had a good qualifying effort, really good qualifying effort with Ernie. And, uh, you know, this is exciting. I, I got to say, I was one of the ones that was very skeptical about coming over here. But these people, they have accepted us with open arms, and it, it's really been neat. And I guess the interesting thing now is we finished third. Now we're going to start back here about eight. So uh, we got 50 laps to get back to the front. I got to say, from all the guys over here, our hearts go out to Elmo Lane family and the Bill Dollars family and uh, we'll be praying for you guys and thinking about you and look forward to seeing you when we get back home tomorrow. Okay, thanks Larry. Bill Dollar, one of the personalities of racing over the past years of the very popular radio program from coast to coast. Uh, killed in an auto accident in Charlotte, North Carolina this past week. And as we mentioned earlier, Elmo Langley lost his life, a heart attack here at this track and there have been numerous phone calls. If care, one would care to make a donation, it's the uh, Winston Wives Auxiliary, uh, to which it should be made in the memory of Alma Lang. Well, here we are getting the field lined up and ready for another go. Take a look at the Prestone race summary. The two different leaders thus far, Wallace and Gordon. Cautions only three to date, Rusty. Uh, your name is Buddy. It is that, yeah, Ken, yeah. and I'll tell you something. I was looking at Rusty Wallace just a second ago, and I think he actually spun out uh, before he got any heat in the tires and got a chance to shake some of the debris off. He turned the car around, going out of the pits into turn one. Great. Well, it could have been. Sticking. Uh, hopefully not. I hope that uh, maybe it was just a, a tire problem, not having any heat in the tires, but he definitely turned it around, going out of the pits down in turn one. See if we can get a report down there as to what did happen to him uh, as they get ready on this on this restart and uh, find out if, if there is a brake problem on Rusty Wallace's Ford Thunderbird as we get ready to go in the second segment. And there you see them trying to get those tires clean, as Buddy pointed out. This surface doesn't work for these drivers at all, does it, Buddy? Well, until you get some heat in the tires and get all that excess rubber off of it, it's extremely slick and. Uh, that's what they're doing right now. They're going back and forth. And you, if you could see this, it looks like spaghetti coming off the tires, the excess rubber that you pick up. It just boils off the tires as you go back and forth like that cleaning. Take a look at the starting order as we get set for this second 50 lap segment with Johnny Benson and Terry Lavani up in front and starting third Rusty Wallace with Mike Skinner in fourth and uh, right behind them fifth and sixth would be Wally Dollenbach and Dale Earnhardt going uh, further back in the field the seventh and eighth spots are Jarrett and Irvin and then you've got Sterling Marlin and Jeff Gordon for row five that's the completion of the inversion of the top ten row six is Scott Gaylord and Toshia, that number one car, is up there to 12th position. Further back in the field, you've got uh, David Green and Fukuyama in the number 23. Rick Corelli out of Denver and Robbie Gordon in the 42. 16th, Bobby Hillen, Butch Gillian, fine drive. Let's get down to Dick Bergren quickly. Ken, that number 42 of Robbie Gordon's is pretty badly beaten up. They tried to straighten it out a little bit as best they could. The left rear corner is still bent. Tried to align the front end. It's only about half right by the looks of it. Gordon is going to have his hands full. Nakia, the guy in that 02 car that's blown all the motors, he's back out running again. But they had to push start the car in fourth gear. He apparently has a transmission problem. So it was a transmission this time. Well, if it's hung in fourth gear, he's going to labor going up through the S's <laughs> because everybody else is going up through there in second gear. Pace car is in second 50. What do you think, buddy? This one coming up. Well, now we're going to find out who has the muscle, who was telling the truth about the car, because it's down to this for $104,000 if they take off. Johnny Benson getting a very nice start. Terry Labonte comes up to speed. They stack him four wide back in the center of the pack and coming to the critical turn one. Who are you going to give it to? Whoa, gets a little bit straight into that corner. You know, he may have had a little brake problem getting down in there. Now he tries to make a move on the inside there on Johnny Benson. 
Benson not moving ground, fighting it through. We've got one loose in the back of the pack, picking it back up is Larry Gun Gunselman. And he's underway, but he had a slow start, got himself out in the dirt. Meanwhile, Terry Labonte is in front with the number five. As the field strings out, he moves up through turn six and seven, headed for turn eight. Johnny Benson, the Penn's oil car, into that second spot, followed by Wallace and Wally Dollenbach in fourth spot. You can see Rusty Wallace in the two car. They're really holding a nice tight line off eight as they come down the front straight away. We'll know pretty quick whether Rusty Wallace has a brake problem or not. You can see him right there. There's Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Rusty on the inside. Johnny Benson holds him off. But Earnhardt gets around Dollenbach, and he picks up for it. Earnhardt. Shooting up through the field, ready to challenge Wallace now for third position. Right now, you can see Johnny Benson trying to keep that second spot, but Ken, he's working very, very hard. I think he may be holding these guys up, and Earnhardt is definitely on the move in third spot. Mike Skinner back in sixth spot. On board with Terry Labonte now, looking back at Johnny Benson in second spot. They're heading into turn eight right now. This is where you set everybody up to make the pass down the front straightaway. You can see their nose to tail as they come off the corner. Big Johnny Benson crowd has got together in Grand Rapids, Michigan to watch him. His sister put the program together. You know, there's about 2,300 members of that group, and they're hoping he's going to stay in second spot. Wallace comes to the inside. He to work this time. He did that because of three car. Dale Earnhardt take, took a look, but look at Rusty make that move in turn two. What a move. So Wallace comes up into second. Benson drops to third, and Earnhardt stays fourth. You see Donald back in fifth, Skinner in sixth. You can see Earnhardt uh, got just a little bit in the back of Benson there. He got a little tail happy, but backed off and let Benson regain control of that car. Dale Jarrett back there in seventh, followed by Ernie Irvin. Top of the hill, and down the stretch they come. As you see, Terry Labonte <laughs> still in that front running position, and an anxious Rusty Wallace crew looking on. Very smooth driver against a very aggressive driver. They head down into turn one. Terry Labonte is very, very smooth. But look at Rusty go through turn two. What a complete package that car is right now. He's not having any brake problems now. And take a look right there. Here's that number three, Earnhardt, trying for third. On the outside, he gets it. Now, that's aggression. When you see a guy, I saw a car going straight back there. I think he made it through the sand trap without any problem, but there was a car that didn't quite make the turn. Look at Rusty go now. Wallace right up there, closes in. <laughs> they don't get any closer than that. You can see Terry taking a wide line there. Here they come, down into the main straightaway. Labonte in front, Wallace coming after him, and just behind them, ten car lengths back, is Earnhardt now in third. Turn one. Labonte holds Wallace off this time. There now Wallace, Wallace tries to get on the inside, and he's there. Wallace down the inside, jamming on the brakes just at the critical moment and able to slam through on the bottom. He found that in practice. He told me about passing in turn two on the bottom side. You can see he just drove it in deep right up under Terry Labonte. Terry had nothing to do but give way. There's his crew looking on as he's taken the command position in this Suzuka event as Don Miller watches <laughs> here, looking a little relieved. Second spot is now Labonte. Long way to go in the second segment, however, and Terry Labonte, I have a feeling, will be back around. Tires begin to wear out, get a little thin. Nobody's better than Terry Labonte, and Earnhardt up to third. Johnny Benson back in fourth, then in fifth, and here comes Wally Dollenbach looking for fourth as they come into turn number one. Now you can see Earnhardt, he watched just a second ago as Rusty Wallace made that nice move to the inside in turn two. He looked under Labonte as they come into turn two just then. Japanese television giving us these pictures that you're watching live on Saturday night, Sunday, back in the United States with Buddy Baker on Ken Squire, topside here at NASCAR's first venture outside the boundaries of the contiguous states. Here you see Terry Labonte 
looking back at Dale Earnhardt. There's Earnhardt coming to the inside, trying to make a move through. That's that critical turn eight, and it's Earnhardt with the move coming down the straightaway. It's a drag race now, but it looks like Earnhardt got just a little bit better grip off the corner and down the front straightaway. He's by Terry Labonte. I guarantee you he's going to make it a little tough on Rusty, I think. Got a couple of heavyweights ready to duke it out up in front here now as Earnhardt closes in on Wallace. Wally Dollenbach finds himself fourth, and now all of a sudden, that Dollenbach car becomes even a bigger factor in this race. He's a great road racer, has all that experience, the 85 and 86 Trans Am champion, had a couple of second places, one at Watkins Glen, has always been able to conquer road courses very handily. And for Bud Moore, that would be something to have a car running up here and running this well. Take a look, here's Johnny Benson, who's moved back another spot. Is that? Yes, indeed. Skinner just in front of him. Ooh, we got one in trouble. And back on the course is coming car number 42, and it's crunched in the side now. Robbie Gordon, he really took some abuse. There's no caution on the track. Well, we can show you what happened to Robbie Gordon right there. Wow. Well, he's tested all the safety apparatus here at this track. He just tested that sand trap out at 140 miles an hour. I'll tell you one thing. I didn't look like brakes were ever touched on the car. I think all the damage you see there on the left front corner of that car was done bouncing through that sand. Robbie Gordon was running in 14th position when that one went away. He is fearless. And with his plan to be in Winston Cup racing next year, he's going to add a lot of excitement to the 1997 series. And we'll be back with more from Suzuka and the coverage of this first international NASCAR race very shortly. With 60 laps complete, 84 miles there at the front 10, there is uh, one new change. Ernie Irvin has just scooted around Johnny Benson, taking over seventh position. Johnny Benson falling to eighth, and Jeff Gordon is ready to challenge him. And David Green in the number 95 has just got off the course, and he's back on another time. Buddy, take a look at this one. Wow, he just did this exactly the same thing that Robbie Gordon did. He went in the corner, got offline, maybe got the tires out in the loose stuff there on the outside of the turn. Lucky to get back on the racetrack without stalling it out in the sand trap. So Owensboro, Kentucky's David Green still with the program out here. Let's go to Steve Burns. With Jimmy Means, who is Wally Dollenbach's crew chief, and also a man who's driven hundreds of NASCAR races. Jimmy, Wally's a heck of a road course racer, but can he catch Rusty? Well, he's having to drive the car awful hard. We're a little lack on gear or motor or whatever. Get, get, getting off that last corner, they're getting us on the straightaway. He's really having to overdrive it. So it, if, if, uh, if the car doesn't give up on him, he's going to give it all he's got. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Dollenbach in fourth position, trying to close on Wallace, Earnhardt, and Jerry Labonte, the front three. Here you see Wallace and Earnhardt. And Earnhardt has picked up a couple of car links on Wallace in the last lap or two. Well, that'll go back and forth. What they do is really run hard, and then they start abusing the tires, and you have to back up just a little bit, give them a little chance. But I tell you who's not backing up any at all. You can see Terry Labonte there in the yellow car coming down the front straightaway. Just behind him, Wally Dollenbach is driving the wheels off that car. A lot of the drivers said that they uh, somehow didn't get the gears right. They just didn't bring the right combination for that second gear back straightaway. But Dollenbach at the present time continues to put the pressure on and whether he's short on motor, or short on gear, he is such a good driver. He's making up for it and staying right here in the front four. 
The big story, Jeff Gordon further back has now moved into eight. He has gone around Benson. Remember, he won the first 50 laps, and he just came here and wanted to go racing. So he's having to fight his way from 10th place after they inverted the front 10 at the end of the first 50 lap segment. We'll take a little break here and then be back with you once again. Oh, Baker, there's your home in Japan. Oh, man. Uh, two big ones. <laughs> Sunday afternoon here in Japan as the Suzuka Thunder Special 100 thunders towards conclusion. Pretty good crowd out today. Hope you're enjoying it on TBS back on Saturday night. In the United States, Rusty Wallace is leading after 66 of 100 laps with Earnhardt, Labonte, Dallenbach, the front four. Jeff Gordon is on the move after they inverted the top 10. He was the winner of the first 50 laps. He's brought himself back to eighth spot. There you see one of the Japanese favorite, the national touring champion. And the number one, Toshika, he's back on track. But a moment or two ago, he uh, he had a moment or two that was pretty wild and got himself off the track, bent the car up a little. Dick Bergeron is standing by. Tell us more about it. Well, we're with David Smith, and today is his last day to be crew chief for Dale Earnhardt. He's going to move over to Mike Skinner next year. Question to you is, you guys are running second to Rusty Wallace. Are you strong enough to take him, and if so, where? The car is really good. You know, we're just trying to manage the tires right now. Try to keep him under him. Uh, you know, he's not saying anything, so I think he's in good shape. Yeah, if Earnhardt's quiet, look out. Quietly sitting in second spot. Fukuyama on the 23 coming by here. That's in 12th spot. And Toshia right behind him is in 13th position. Then Rick Corelli in the number 61 is in 14th. There's Fukuyama. And he is in, as we say, 12th spot. And he is running on the lead lap. With 15 cars running on the lead lap at the present time here at Suzuka in Japan. Bernhardt in the number three. Bernhardt's doing all he can do, but right now Rusty Wallace is in the zone, as they say. Right now he's doing everything right. You can see him getting the car down on the corner very straight. Bernhardt's doing everything he can do try to close him, but he's just not making it. It's been a happy Earnhardt all week. He's really enjoyed Japan. And he's been very positive. He has spent considerable time with the fans over here. And then when he gets to race time, doesn't matter where it is. Short track, road course, long track, super speedway. This son of a gun can drive. Here he is, 45 years old, badly hurt. And he won't tell you how bad, but he hurt and big time after Talladega this year. Lost the championship, but still fourth in the standings. And here he is finding it out on a road course, 7,000 miles from home, and looking good. You know one thing, they're getting into lap traffic right now. This may be a break for Earnhardt to try to close in on Rusty Wallace, as you can see him coming up there right now on the 37 car there of uh, Larry Gunther. Dan Obrist has just pitted again, having trouble with the number 12. Well, you call that one. Here's that 37. Got someone right there. And now Wallace is trying to. And he Whoa, it didn't take him nice very long to make that move. No. And someone gave him some room, let him scoot through. <laughs> Jeff Gordon having to fight his way in. He's still back there in eighth, folks. If you were wondering about Gordon, who won the first 50. Boy, aren't our, some work. he turned that thing right down in that corner. Gunselman gave him a little bit of room, but I thought they were going to make contact because they were going through the S's. Dale Earnhardt chasing Rusty Wallace. Here he is back in the main chute, completing the uh, 71st lap. What is coming here to Japan meant to a guy like Dale Earnhardt? We came over the first time and uh, did the introduction for NASCAR, and uh, that was a pretty exciting time for us and myself, and I was honored to do that. And to come back and race in a foreign country like this, as far off from uh, America it is, and, uh, when we've been a whole day off, but, uh, it's, it's, it's really fun, fun uh, to be here, and uh, it seems like everybody's receiving us well, and it's looked like it's going to be a good thing. 
Bearing blue colors for AC Delco while he's in Japan, not the traditional black colors, uh, because the sponsor uh, has a lot more ties to Japan. And therefore, a, a whole new look on car number three for this special event to conclude 1996 in NASCAR racing. What do you think a super speedway is going to do here in Japan time to come? I think they're going to get a fan base and just a little bit over here because the people really have enjoyed this this week. And uh, this kind of thing is what they come to see. You can see Dale Jarrett looking on the inside of Dallenbach as they head down into turn one. Uh, I think it'll just uh, take a year or so for everybody to say, OK, I know who this guy is. I want to see him win. And that's where you get all your fans from. Fourth position is what they're fighting for. Dallenbach and Jarrett. Dick Bergeron standing by with Felix Sabatis down here at this moment. Yeah, Ken, this is a fellow that made himself a couple of personal fortunes right here in Japan. But today he's a little unhappy with his race car because it's bent up in about every corner. How bad is that number 42, Felix? Well, you know, in the first segment, we kind of left rear tire with one lap to go. We were running 10th. He ran the track. And after we came back out, the car hasn't been right to begin with. So we've had a lot of problems with it. But uh, hey, we've got an experience. Robbie's young and he's going to be good. So we're going to give them uh, some practice time today and go to Daytona. And next year, Felix is going to take Robbie Gordon to Indianapolis. He has put in the order for two cars, and he's going to try to run Indianapolis and Winston Cup. And that means Charlotte the same weekend? That like means he'll be it. flying from Indianapolis over to Charlotte. Uh, it's been done before, and I'm sure it'll be done again by Robbie Gordon. And let me tell you, everybody says he's a little too aggressive. You can rattle that. You can't make it if it's not there. Good point. And he certainly is one that gives you a wild show as, as you remember his, his events. He came out of that desert racing and trucks where he just absolutely dominated. He's used to improvising. And uh, certainly Earnhardt had that reputation when he began. He did that. And uh, I will tell you this, right now Earnhardt looks like he may be closing the gap just a little bit on Rusty Wallace for uh, uh, first place, but right here is a real action right now. These guys are going at it, and how good is this guy going to be? Oh. Mike Skinner in the number 31 there. He's running right up front, has really had very little experience in a Winston Cup car at all. You can see him right up there with some of the best. Yeah, but look at Gordon back there in eighth. I mean, here he is. He went just out and raced the wheels off that thing, took the tenth position, just wants to go out and race. And here he is right back ready to challenge Ernie Irvin for seventh and Skinner for six. He'll find the knot on that rope a little harder to <laughs> climb now though. I'm going to tell you this is for all the beans now. This isn't for the first segment. Took that bonus here he is skipping up to the outside trying that line. As he comes down this main chute if you just joined us you get about 170 miles per hour here. Then you're hard on the binders into a 30 foot wide first turn. And you got to be right or you're not going to be in this race. Wally Dollenbach in fourth position. And we'll be back with more of our live action after we send you another postcard from Japan here on TBS. Change among the leaders. Wallace and Earnhardt and Labonte stay one, two, and three as you watch Wallace debating some lap cars to move along. Dahlenbach stays fourth and Skinner fifth. But Jarrett had himself a problem and he has backed up from six into eighth spot. Here's what happened to him. Well, you can see he's in a straight line right here and he just pulls way over to the left, right side of your screen there and just backs off and lets all these cars go by. That usually is a brake problem or a real handling problem. There's something wrong with the car. So it brings Gordon up into seventh spot, and Steve Burns can tell us more. And we're with Todd Parrott, the crew chief for Dale Jarrett. Are you guys having a problem, Todd? Yeah, we've lost third gear in the transmission, and uh, right now he's just having to go from second to fourth. It's a shame we had a really good car, and he was just getting ready to make a move on Wally and move up to fourth and try to get Terry, try to finish in the top three and get up on that stand here in Japan. Thank you. Toshia in the number one running 15th. That's the second time he's been doing a little grass cutting here today. I'll show you that one again. 
That looks like the old Richard Petty line in Riverside, California. Remember when he used to cut straight across? I resemble that statement. I've been there myself. Uh, <laughs> well, he's back on, and I don't think he lost a spot. But the guy that's on the move at the present time, or the guys, are uh, Skinner, Urban, Gordon. And Gordon finds himself up to seventh. Sterling Marlin coming to eighth now as Dale Jarrett settles back to ninth. He's lost that third gear, and the only time you really use it is coming off turn eight and down the main straightaway. When you make that shift, if you haven't got it, lose some RPMs there for a moment. Well, That's exactly when you have that problem, you always wonder if you even pull it back for a high gear whether you're going to have anything at all because there's loose parts in that transmission when you lose a gear. Wallace stays in front and there you see the interval back to Earnhardt in second. You know the incredible part this week Ken uh, Rusty Wallace has never talked about second place at all even in our little sound bite earlier when he was taking us around the racetrack and he was saying he come over here for one reason that's to win the race and he really hadn't had time to do the things he wanted to do because he wanted to win this race and he is doing a great job right now that car looks like it's on the string out there looks like it's on the end of a string being swung around as you see it go through those corners Johnny Benson is staying 10th the Benson fans all together up there I'm sure his dad is there tonight watch John of course his dad was a well-known racer too and Johnny Benson jr. here in Japan for the Penzo folks stays now in 10th spot there's that interval, first to second. Laps, well, we've completed 81, and that gets us down to 113 miles completed of the 140 in this event. With 81, there's 19 laps to go. Well, what we're getting into now is uh, the part of the race where if the tires are starting to give up, you can see Rusty fishtail just a little bit coming out of turn two as he starts up through the S's. Now the, the uh, real chassis cars really take over and the aggressive drivers because nobody's handling great right now. The tires are starting to give up. We'll take a commercial break and come back to Suzuka for the conclusion of this first venture outside of the United States for NASCAR's big leagues. At lap 85, there's another full course caution here, and it's the first one in the second 50-lap leg. Gunselman in trouble. Number 37, Larry Gunselman having a problem out here that has uh, brought out the uh, caution. He's a West Coast driver, came over expressly for this event. Gunselman finds himself out in the weeds there after he was running in 23rd position. Bill France driving the pace car out here today, just in front of Rusty Wallace, and Dale Earnhardt first and second as we get ready to bring them all back together for a shootout to finish it here today. So earlier we talked with the Bill France about the future of this event and NASCAR racing in Japan. Here's what he told us. Well, we have a we have a two year, uh, 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 two more years. Where in the third year, you know they're going to open the new oval track up north of, of uh, Tokyo. So. You know that that event will be more uh, patterned after what the, I think what you see more on television over here from our on since we're more on ovals than we are on road courses. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know that'll be the uh, that'll be in a lot of respects up to the Suzuka people on, on what they're on what they're doing, and we'll have to see how this event does. Uh, you know. Uh, the, the people in the United States know who the drivers are, big time. But overseas, I don't think quite, you know, there are maybe some other drivers know, know more than they are because they've been exposed more. So it'll be, it'll be good for the drivers to get some uh, additional exposure. And for certainly the fan enthusiasm for other sports in this country is such that uh, it's a whole new world and a new marketing opportunity for NASCAR. And one of the interesting things is that they're talking about a NASCAR series with Japanese cars here in Japan. It ought to work. You know, D Wally Dahlenbeck just stopped. He's the only front runner that come in for a pit stop just now. So a uh, strategy is being played right now by the Bud Moore team. 
some of the fans looking on here this afternoon. Understand that uh, France, after the first 50 laps, so they put another fella in the car, but he is not driving the pace car at this moment. So uh, let's get down to Kenji for a moment, who's standing by on pit road. This is a Suzuki racetrack, so we've never had the overcoast in Japan. So, but we will have the overcoast here. Okay, this is a map, or the, actually the picture of Twin Link Motegi. So, actually, this race course is owned by Honda Corporation, and also the, this Suzuki track is also uh, owned by Honda Corporation. So, Honda is going to be very serious to bring the NASCAR race. So, we have a lot of American action in the future in Japan. Mile and a half oval is what they're talking about for Japan in the future. And in a couple of years, uh, ready to run it. Suzuka, of course, famous for its uh, Formula One. And as Bill was saying, that track is a little closer to Tokyo. And the Honda people, who had a great part in building this course, uh, are fully behind the construction of this new super speedway uh, next to the largest city in Japan. Now you're looking at what? Fukuyama another time? That's him. Yeah, let's see how he's doing out here today. Well, he's up to 12th. He's having a good run for uh, Very consistent. Travis. He spun one time earlier in the show, but uh, I tell you, he's doing a great job. And uh, I tell you, I was talking with the guys that are working on the car, and they said, you just wouldn't believe what he knows about the chassis on the car. You know, among the more popular sports, one to go, and we're going to be going again, I believe, and get us down for a shootout to the finish. Toshia is back on pit road in that number one. That car had been running in 15th position. We're going to take a commercial break. I think we're going to stay right here with 86 laps complete as we get ready on this restart. Wallace, Earnhardt, Labonte, Skinner, Gordon, Irvin, top six. A tribute to Almo Langley inside of Opus number 12 as it comes back out again. And all of the cars here in Japan remembering Elmo in that manner. Yeah, and everybody's going to miss Elmo. I tell you, they depended a lot on what he did as far as whether the track was ready to go back under green or what. And uh, we're all going to miss it. Dick, Dick Berger. Ron Hornaday is in the pits right now, and half his crew is underneath the car. They appear to be working on the transmission. Yes, he's got a transmission problem. They're trying to fix it so he can get it into gear. Hornaday is an absolute expert at road racing, and a lot of people thought this could have been his race to win, but not with this kind of problem. Mm -hmm. There you see Hornaday, car jacked up. It's a bad break for him. He had a good run in the first 50 lap segment. Not gonna work his way for the rest of this one. The tires there. All right, they're coming down, and they should be getting green this time by as they come off turn number eight. As they come, you'll have Wallace, Earnhardt, Labonte, the front three, Skinner in fourth, Jeff Gordon in fifth, Ernie Irvin sixth, Sterling Marlin seventh, Dale Jarrett eighth, Benson will be in ninth, Gaylord will find himself in tenth position as they come back to take green. Good performance by uh, Gaylord, Scott Gaylord out here today. This is the first time he has driven for this team. Invited by uh, Bill Strausser to uh, to run this race. Here they come for the green flag. Jeff Gordon has really moved up in the fifth place. You can see Terry Labonte getting sideways there. As he got touched by uh, Skinner as they started off there. Jeff Gordon got by him. Pulling back to the line. Here comes uh, that would. Let's see Ernie Urban pulling to the inside. Looks like he's going to get by Skinner coming into the corner. Does it? Makes the spot. Gordon making the big jump gets himself closer to the front. He muscles himself up into third. And we've got number 20 off in the weeds. That's Wakita. Yeah. Dusted out number 20 here. Wallace stays first. Wow, Gordon right there. Take a look at this move. <laughs> Hello, Sam. I guarantee you one thing. Without that Sam, we'd have a bunch of torn up cars here. So, Wakita bogeys here in the first hole. You talk about bogeying right now. Jeff Gordon is bogeying. He's not bogeying. Look at this car go down the straightaway as he tries to make a move on Earnhardt headed toward turn one. I tell you, Jeff Gordon, I said it, the knot was going to be a little further apart, but 
Jeff Gordon showing you why he is what he is today. Very aggressive, very knowledgeable, and doing a great job in the 24 car there. 88 of 100 laps complete, and Gordon is there all over Earnhardt. You've got the veteran against the kid in that one, and just behind him comes Terry Labonte. He's looking for any opportunity. Where it's narrow, where it's wide, doesn't matter. Uphill, downhill, Gordon wants to get up into that second spot and challenge the leader. Boy, is he putting the heat on Earnhardt or what? He's one inch off the back bumper as they head towards the front straightaway. You can see Jeff looking on the inside. It's kind of fish tails here. He loses about a car left. You can see he didn't get a good run off turn eight. Threw it in there, and he had to pick it back up. That cost him just that much to let Earnhardt go uncontested off turn eight and back down to one. And once again, it'll be Jeff Gordon clambering back up for another shot at him. Oh, Mike Skinner's off the course. He went it. He better be careful there. Nearly got that one shortened up on both ends as he came back on the track. Well, that's Wally Dolan back in the 15 there. He stopped just a second ago and took on tires. He's the only one of the front runners out there on fresh tires. I do not believe he has the time. Oh, Fuki, Fukuyama has hit it big time. That's some of the tires out in the racetrack. As you see the cars coming at him, that's about 10 or 12 tires to, uh, together there. Full course caution as Fukuyama at turn one goes in solidly. Man, what a hit. Full course caution out for Fukuyama after he goes off at turn number one. You can see him getting out. out of the car. That's a good sign. That was a hard hit, but you can see him getting out under his own power, so he's okay. They have just run totally out of brakes going down there. And we got a couple of replays we can show you of this three-time Formula 5000 champion for Nissan. There's Skinner getting in trouble in the 31 from a little earlier. And just missing the bullet as he comes back on the course. There's Fukuyama, Fukuyama there on the outside. He got tagged from behind there and turned into the outside there. You can see him hitting the tire barrier very hard. Turn two. Turn two turn areas three, where he ended yeah. up. And they may put a red flag on this to get Fukuyama's car back as it lies very close to the track. We have completed 90 laps. There are 10 remaining to decide it. They're talking about a full course red. They're showing just a yellow here now. Had a report for a moment that they were going full course red. Not the case at all. Here's Fukuyama walking back after he takes the hardest hit anyone has taken today. Hey, American sports in Japan, you talk about baseball, you talk about their interest in other activities. Take a look at David Green, one of the biggest pastimes in Japan. <laughs> no turkey there. Ooh. We're back with you live at the Suzuka race course here in Japan on TBS this special event live today with right now Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt having a discussion as they came down the main straightaway Earnhardt had pulled up beside Rusty and they were I'm sure discussing more than what they were going to do for dinner tonight right behind them Jeff Gordon has added a big factor this race and Wally Dollenbach pitted took on tires went way back at 17th or 18th he's back to 10th that be interesting to see what will happen with him on the laps here's number 95 David Green the Caterpillar car in. this is really hurting uh, Dolan back as far as his strategy uh, every a lap that they run under the yellow right now he he's having a problem he won't be able to make up the time Number 31, they say, is uh, dropping some fluid on Mike Skinner's car. That's the report that we're getting from NASCAR. And we'll go to Steve Burns and, and see what the story is on pit road. With Travis Carter, the car owner of the 23, and I've known Travis a long time, but don't know as I've ever seen him this upset. Travis, what happened? 
From Justin DeMar, it looked like a boneheaded move by Winston Cup regular. I mean, the 15 had just changed tires, and obviously it's going to be a little quicker, but he just drove into the back of this guy and wrecked him. It's it's a shame. It's a shame for the fans, of course, here in Japan. I, you know, Fukuyama was one of their local heroes. and Tremendous guy, great competitor, and one of the finest men and most fun people that we've ever been associated with. So I know it's a disappointment for him. It's a disappointment for us. and. All the fans here in Japan, it's, it's, it's too bad. He ran well, he worked hard. Uh, we sort of started him in a hole, hurt him some, but uh, the guy's quite capable of racing with these guys. I think in a good situation, he could beat them. All right, thank you, Travis. And that testimony, that testament to Fujiyama has been going all, all week, as we mentioned earlier. They're very excited about the potential of him uh, in these races. Well, you see Terry Labonte trying to get those tires cleaned up and get himself ready for these last final moments. They're working lap number 93, still under caution. I would think we would get going with three or four laps to go for sure. And hopefully so, yeah. because there's, uh, I don't think we've watched all the story yet. I think uh, Rusty's going to have to work very hard. And I also think Jeff Gordon may have the fastest car on the speedway right now, but he has two people to get by. Travis Carter taking a shot at Wally Dolan back there. Says that he was rear-ended by him, and that's what ended uh, Fukuyama's day. They were serious uh, yesterday afternoon in the Cecil Gordon Travis Carter and they said boy this is a guy you wish you had back in the States. Forty one year old Japanese driver that's just crashed here and crashed as hard as anyone has all week. There you see the remains of that number twenty three. Jimmy Spencer's ride as we get ready for the nineteen ninety seven season. That road racing car needs a little work. I'd say so. As we get set on the restart, Wallace Earnhardt Gordon couldn't ask for more with Terry Labonte perhaps putting the frosting on it in fourth position. Ernie Irvin right there in fifth. Sterling Marlin has come up to sixth position. 93 complete. We should be getting this one turned loose in just a moment here. I'm really impressed with the effort that's been made by Jeff Gordon. Here you see the lap marker down here on Pitt Road. They have a great big team that is right in front of the grandstands. They can follow them all around the road course. Big help for the Japanese fans, for any fans on any race track. And they certainly, uh, they've had four events here in the last five weeks. They've had a Formula One event, they've had a touring event, a motorcycle event, a regional event, and now this last race of the season. It is winter here in Japan. With the NASCAR stars coming to the Orient for the first time. And this is when you don't want to have a bad start. As you can see, the two car has really jumped out there. What a great start by Rusty Wallace. Boy, he put it on coming down. See him shaking those wheels a little bit to make sure he does not have any buildup on the tires as he goes down in turn one. You can see him wiggling in the car back and forth at speed. So Earnhardt stays in second. There's Gordon looking to the inside. Gordon beginning to make a move. He's up there fighting, and the three takes him right back out. I was just fixing third. to say, if he passes Earnhardt on the outside, that's new hero material for the year. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you don't do that. Great battle for second spot. From 10th up to third is Jeff Gordon. Terry Labonte lying just behind him, and Ernie Irvin. What a good job Irvin has done today. Irvin, and also there in the four car, uh, Sterling Marlin has run very well all day. Outstanding racing by these principals of the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. And back into the main straightaway in this battle for second. There's Jeff Gordon right there, ready to pounce. I think Jeff just feeling him out right now. He has a lot of race car. He's looking to the inside of Earnhardt as they head into turn one. He's not going to make it. Man in black. He may have turned blue for the day, but he's still the man <laughs> in black right there. He's still tough. Don't want to mess with him. From Labonte looking back. Ernie Urban right there. Fifth spot. Just behind him, Sterling Marlin. All another go at it. All over the back end of number three is Jeff Gordon. Well, while they're fighting, you can see in the top part of this film right here, the two car of, of uh, Rusty Wallace is checking out while they fight like they're going right now. Dale Earnhardt oh. is trying to protect second right now. And Terry Labonte got moved out of the line there. He got pushed over. Ernie Urban's coming up to challenge him. This film. This is live. I know it. I know, I know, I know. 
Look at Ernie Irvin, though. He moves right past Harry Labonte. Four to go. Yep. Sterling Marlin now ready to take a shot. That all happened up in turn eight. Ernie got up on the back of Terry Labonte, got him a little loose, and got him in that main straightaway. Terry Labonte. Back there a spot or two. Ernie Irvin's really moving up on these two while they fight it out. Earnhardt's doing everything he can to keep Jeff Gordon back. Ernie Irvin moving in here. Ernie Irvin in fourth. Labonte in fifth. Marlon in sixth. Now, what he's doing there is messing with Earnhardt. He's moving over there just to give him something else in the mirror to worry about. Look at Jeff Gordon trying to make a move on the outside. Now he's coming to the outside. We, uh, we've got another flag down. The number 50 is broken loose. Scott Gaylord is going to put us under caution with three to go. Oh, my. Well, these guys know it's a race back to the flag, yep. too, so they're going at it. This is to the flag, and this could be to the end of the race. So that battle is pretty intense. Here they come up the hill for the final time. It is still Earnhardt with that advantage for second spot. Ernie Irvin is fun, I think. He was just behind Jeff Gordon. I don't see him there anymore. Big hole, and indeed, as they race to the line, there's the four in trouble as well as it came off the corner. Back to the line they come, and the front end is gone on the number four. He was in contact with the 28 of Ernie Irvin just making the turn. Wallace comes across the strike, racing to the caution, and we can show you what happened here. Take a look. Well, you can see just behind Jeff Gordon, the back of the 28 gets out. You can see Terry Labonte doing everything he can to get to the inside. Ooh. The contact that the four car had was with Terry Labonte. And I think he got a piece of Wally Dolan back as well in the 15. So the number four of Sterling Marlin, front end abused. He try to find his way back to pit row. Take a look at that. Flat tire and probably did some damage to the oil cooler because it is right there on the left corner of that uh, front end on the four car. Wallace, Earnhardt, and Gordon, the top three. Terry Labonte was able to squeak through some way on that. But gee, Ernie Irvin and Sterling Marlin and Dahlenbach looked like they were collected on that one. Ernie was doing what you have to do and you know, it's a race back to the flag. An in-car look at what happens. Hard contact there. The 50 has been pushed back in. It had been broken down. They brought it in under this opportunity and tried to make one more lap, and that didn't work. But this incident happened battling for position, going for it up here in that final portion of the course. We're showing 98 complete, working 99 this time by. You know, Ken, if, if Wally Dahlenbach had have made a, a run all the way on the green flag, he's moved all the way up to fifth, he would have been a contender, I believe, by changing tires. I think we're getting a white-green right here. You're going to get a white flag, white-green, headed for checkers. Boy, this ought to be wild. You can see this them shaking it. the cars down through there to clean the tires as they head down to turn one. Here comes Gordon on the inside corner. Gordon holds third spot. Now he's trying for second. He's up on the inside. Even across. What a battle for second place. That was his chance. I don't believe he can get Earnhardt, but he made that bold move on the inside in turn two. He's looking on the inside of Earnhardt again. No points, just pride right here. Takes another shot at him. Gordon is right there. Works down to the inside and from that car just in front, he's great. Rusty Wallace looking back at the field. They go through the S's. Okay, what he has to do now is exactly what he's doing. He put the bumper to him just a little bit to move on Hart to the outside. Jeff Gordon fighting on the inside. Here they come for the checkered flag. Wallace coming down, Gordon on the inside. And a 
as they come to the line. <laughs> oh, you want to call that one? I'm going to wait for a replay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Looks like Earnhardt may have pulled it off by just that much. What a move by Gordon as he tried to loosen Earnhardt up in the final corner. We saw the same thing before with Ernie Irvin and Labonte. Replay of the finish coming up here at Suzuka as the two car, Rusty Wallace has won and the battle for second place goes right to the wire. We know where to put a camera car, don't we? <laughs> Look at this, how? Oh. Well, thank you guys, it was our pleasure. We'll take a break and be back here at Suzuka. Rusty Wallace has won it and what a dramatic finish between Earnhardt and Gordon. Rusty Wallace has just won the first race here in Japan, standing on top of the car victoriously. The, he is definitely the crowd favorite here in Japan. Arms raised in victory. Well, Rusty, you said you're coming here to win this thing, and you did it, man. I really did. I'd like to dedicate this win to Elmo Langley, who passed away this week. But what a great win. The crew really did good. The first segment, we had too much tape on the grills, and the car kept getting the brakes real hot. So I lagged back to cool them off, and they got some tape off. And man, she was really cooking after that. But uh, great win. We uh, paid a lot of attention. I wish my wife Patty was here, and Roger Penske, and Walt, and Dan, and all of them. But this is for you guys. Uh, the old Miller, Miller special really came through, and I'm really happy with the Miller Brewing Company and Mazak Corporation and Mead and, uh, and Mobile and Bosch and all our sponsors, especially this Ford, man. This thing really ran grit, and I just, uh, I can't be happier. Rusty, at the end of segment one, did you think you could get to victory lane? Well, I don't know. I mean, I started in the second row there behind the 30 car, and I knew the only thing I could do is just try to go through the gears, and I picked a point in the middle of one and two where I had to get the throttle and go for it, and I went for it, and I got the five car, and I got the 30 car. But what a great car. It handled perfect. The motor ran good. I turned it about 9,400 all day long. Mike Eggett, she's okay. She's still living. And the guys at the shop, you're to be commended for this one. But uh, 7,000 miles, 14 time zones, seven continents. Baby, we'd be home on Monday night. <laughs> and, will you, and will you come back to Japan? Oh, yeah, I'll be coming back to Japan. I just about got it figured out right now. Uh, so uh, what a great win. I mean, we get the pole. We get the Winston bonus. We get the Unical bonus. But uh, all my fans back in the United States, thank you very much. But my team. Led by Robin Pemberton, what a great job, and the shocks were great. Everything was great. Just can't say enough for everybody. All right, congratulations, Thank Rusty. You very much. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, Jeff Gordon <laughs> used all the tools he had to try to get by Dale Earnhardt. The front bumper a little bit damaged. How about that ride, Dale? Was he fair with you? I don't know anybody say he won't put the bumper to you, but <laughs> in all honesty, uh, we we were pushing real bad, and the tires were burnt off the back, and. He was doing all he could without turning me. He did everything but turn me around to get by me. We, we raced a pretty good race to the line, so it was, it was exciting. Rusty, I thought, was going to mess up there. He locked his brakes up, and I thought Jeff and I both were going to be on him, and then I didn't know what was going to happen because they're going to be in the middle of the punching bag, and <laughs> it was going to be exciting, but it, it was a good race. Uh, I'd like to have won it, but, you know, uh, it was okay. I mean, it was his first trip to Japan and run second. <laughs> ain't, too, ain't too bad, but second sort of feel the same way I do in America about it. It, don't, it ain't good. And Jeff, how about you? What'd you learn from this fellow following him? Well, <laughs> I learned that I shouldn't have won the first half. I know that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to see what my car had, and it, I had a lot. It was a great car, and uh, we were able to drive it up to the front. Had some fun there with Dale at the end. I mean, I think we really put on a good show for these fans, and uh, especially those last couple laps, everybody was just going all out. And we showed, you know, that we weren't just here uh, to play. We we're here to win. And, uh, you know, I, I think those last couple laps proved that. And I was side by side on his bumper, at his bumper, and, uh, you know, I just couldn't get him. But uh, it was a fun race, and uh, we're glad to, to be here in Japan and can't wait to come back. How difficult is it to ride behind a guy, keep tapping him like that, and not take him all the way around? Well, you know, you race with guys enough. <laughs> you, you learn how to race them and, uh, and you know, what, what you can do with them and who you can trust. And I think Dale knew I, I was on him, but, uh, you know, I, I, I could hit him just hard enough to get him sideways. But I, even hitting him and getting him sideways wasn't enough, uh, you know, and, and I wasn't going to take it any further than that. I, I wanted to get up beside him, and I did coming off the last turn. I just couldn't put the pedal down to get by him because I was spinning the tires. But, uh, you know, we missed Ray and, and Rick and those guys. But, uh, you know, now it's over. I think we had a, a great experience experience a lot of fun and this team is great I mean uh, we, we really had a lot of fun but we worked together and uh, everything went great okay let's go back to victory lane 
Well, we're back topside. We're looking down at Victory Lane. Rusty Wallace celebrating here in Japan after this victory and this great day for NASCAR racing. Going international. Let's take a look at that finish. Rusty Wallace to win. He had it covered. Battles for second spot. What well, a battle. You can see, Jeff, uh, right there has it all down. He's up under uh, Earnhardt as they start down the front straightaway. Uh, right there, he didn't have the jump that he should have to, to beat Earnhardt back. Earnhardt won this uh, second place by probably maybe six inches. It was too close for us to call up here. It was a great finish as Earnhardt did come home in second, Gordon in third, Terry Labonte credited with fourth, and Wally Dollenbach driving for Bud Moore gets himself a very respectable fifth. How about John Benson? Hey, up there in Grand Rapids, things look good for Johnny. Sixth place today.